Uh, well, this morning we are continuing in our series to the, not to the book, but through Hebrews chapter 11. And we are looking at this one particular chapter, looking at the topic of faith. And if you remember in the very beginning of the series, I basically just gave us what is faith? What, why are we called to live out in faith? And last we looked at the faith of Abraham. If you look at Hebrews chapter 11, the writer of Hebrews is basically just telling us all these Old Testament uh, men and women who live by faith. And he encourages us to do the same as well. And so this morning, we're going to look at the life of Moses. And uh, we're going to be in Hebrews 11 verses 23 to 30. And today we're going to look at the barriers to our faith, barriers to faith. And so I'm going to read verses 23, and we'll go to verse 30. I'll pray, and then we'll go into the word. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents, because when they saw that the child was beautiful, they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the, re looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith... The people cross the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled, uh, after they had been encircled for seven days. Let's bow our heads in prayer as we go into God's word. Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that as your church, that we would be people who live by faith. Uh, Lord, often in our day-to-day -day lives, uh, we are so used to just living out what we plan and what we see, uh, but Lord, help us to recognize that the Christian life, there are aspects and moments in our life where you call us to live by faith when uh, things don't get planned out and when we don't have all the answers, uh, you ask us to step out in faith. And so Lord, I pray that you would give us the courage to do that in wherever area you're asking us to do. And Lord, as we look at this passage, and specifically as we look at the faith of Moses, Lord, we pray not only would be, we would be encouraged, but help us to also be challenged to see this man living out in faith, even when uh, there was opposition and there were challenges as he desired to be used by you. And so, God, we pray that you would speak to us. We depend on you during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, the series is called Living by Faith, and we've been really answering the question, what does it mean to live by faith? In the first week, we talked about what is faith, and I said that faith is more than just intellectual knowledge. We all need faith in our everyday decisions of our life for the Christian. What does faith do? That was really the question for the second week, and basically we said that faith trusts, it obeys, and it surrenders as we looked at the life of Abraham. Faith is not stagnant. But when we think about living out in faith, it's associated with action. We are called to take steps in faith. And I believe for the believer, we will always face moments or face moments in our Christian walk where God calls us to step out in faith. Now, just to summarize what we've been talking about, I just want to show you a quick clip. And this clip is from this movie called Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. If you've never watched these movies, they're, it's a great series. Uh, it's about this archaeologist named Indiana Jones, and he's on the hunt for the Holy Grail, meaning it's the, the cup that Jesus drank from on the Last Supper. And he needs to get this cup to actually uh, heal his dying dad who's been shot. This cup was supposed to give eternal life. And to get this cup, he has to pass these tests of faith. And so I wanted to show us this clip and just give you a little bit of summary of what faith is like. And so if we can cue up this video and go ahead and play it.
All right. Uh, I love that scene in this movie. If you've ever watched the movie, it's actually a great movie to watch because I believe that this is a great depiction of what faith is like. Here's Indiana Jones. He has to cross this chasm where he sees no bridge, nothing that he could visibly see. But the whole test is that he needs to take a step of faith. And we see here that as he does that, he puts his entire weight and he takes, takes this step of faith. And we see that there is actually an invisible bridge that turns visible. But I think that's a great picture of what faith is like. For all of us here to live out God's mission for our lives, I believe there are moments where God also calls us to take a step of faith. There will be moments in our Christian life where God may seem like it is, no, God will put us in positions where it seems impossible, where we need God's provision and help to uh, advance his mission or to live out his purpose in our life. I want to say this, that living in faith or living by faith is not easy because what that means is that we need to give up control. We said this in the very beginning of the series, but uh, faith is not predictable. And there will be moments in the Christian life when we are called to live out our faith, where we need to give up control to the Lord. And I think that's what it means to walk in faith or to live out in faith. And so this morning, the writer talks about the faith of Moses. And as we look at the life of Moses, I believe that there are barriers or obstacles to Moses' faith that we can learn from. And as we look at the life of Moses, simply the question that we want to answer is what are the barriers we face when it comes to living by faith? And most importantly, we want to look at how we are to overcome these barriers of faith. And so as we look at these barriers of faith, we want to look at four things that Moses had to overcome. So number one, Moses had to overcome fear. The first barrier to our faith is fear. Again, I'm going to read verse 23. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden for three months by his parents because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Now, as we go through this message, I'm just going to summarize Moses' life. And here, when Moses was born, his parents basically in faith, put him in a basket and put, uh, uh, have him, had him go down the Nile River. But to give you a little bit of context of what's going on here, in Exodus chapter 1, Joseph, who was a leader of Israel, has passed away. And so uh, God's people at that time uh, were growing. They were expanding. Actually, if you read uh, Exodus, they were multiplying like crazy. And as they were in Egypt, Pharaoh did not know what to do with all the Jews back in those days. And what he did was he wanted to enslave them or oppress them. And so he put them in slavery and basically put them to work. And what the text says here is that as he oppressed them more, they grew more prosperous. Not only that, because of their prosperity, Pharaoh decided to kill every firstborn Jewish male. And so there was an edict that was gone out, basically saying all firstborn males will be put to death. And so it says, by faith, Moses' parents did not want to kill their son, but rather they took their son Moses and put, them, put him down the Nile River. He was founded by the daughter of Pharaoh where he would grow up or experience royalty. And so as we look at the beginning uh, stages of Moses' life, what we see here is that Moses' parents were not dictated by fear. I want to say this, that fear will always compromise our faith. When it comes to living our out in faith, I think one of the greatest factors that will hinder us is fear. We see that all in Scripture. In Mark chapter 4, there is this incident where Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee in a boat. There was this great storm that was uh, arising or coming out about, and Jesus is sleeping on the boat. And I, the disciples woke up Jesus, and basically Jesus said to them, Why are you so, same word, afraid or in fear? Do you still have no faith? 
And so again, Jesus also connects fear with faith. The disciples basically did not have any faith because of their fear. And so here's the question for all of us. Where does fear prevent you from living out in faith? Where does fear prevent you from living out in faith? Maybe you are afraid to step out in faith. Maybe it's going on missions or giving generously or serving somewhere. Maybe you're simply afraid of the future. You know, as I just talked to people as a pastor, many people are just afraid of decisions they need to make of their future because they are uncertain of what the future holds. And so they often live in fear. I wouldn't believe, I believe that this morning, one of the things that God wants to speak to us about is that in order for us to live out a life of faith, we are called to not experience fear like the disciples did. Do we trust Jesus and his ways in these moments of fear as Jesus calls out, calls us to walk in faith? You know, as I was thinking about this idea of fear and faith, one of the pictures that God gave me was a few years ago, I took a missions trip, a missions team to, um, we did this team bonding thing to whitewater rafting. And if you've ever been to whitewater rafting, there are different categories that you can go on of rapids. Uh, you know, one being the lowest, five being the highest. And at that time, there was a storm that came right before we went. And so a lot of the rapids were actually a, a category five that we were going on. And um, what this one, we had a guy that was in our boat. Uh, basically, he said, if you, get, if you get thrown off the boat, he said, don't worry because you have your vest and I am here to pull you out of the water if you fall in. And uh, me, uh, as we are going in this category five rapids, uh, obviously we hit this rock, we all fall into the water and I had this moment of terrifying fear because if you've been in these, in these rapids, um, if you get caught in a particular section, all you experience is just water coming at you. And so I got caught in this one particular part of the rapids where I felt like I was gonna drown, right? And one of the things that the guy told us was, don't freak out, like don't flail, right? But just let the rapids take you down the, the water. Me, not remembering what he said, I was just flailing my arms, you know, screaming for someone to help me. He grabbed me by the life jacket, he pulled me up. But it was one of those moments where I experienced Great amount of fear, did not trust my life the best, did not trust this guide. And I think many times that's what fear does to us. We are overwhelmed by the things that we are afraid of, or we look at the circumstances and they become bigger than our savior. And so we look at fear and we often, it prevents us from living out in faith. Second, another barrier to faith is security and comfort. Again, verse 24, by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. So what is the author talking about here? Well, again, he talks about a time in Moses' life where he grew up in the Pharaoh's courts, or really his house. And as Moses was growing up in the Pharaoh's daughter's, daughter's house, he had access to power and riches. If you think about Moses' life, he had everything at his fingertips, any kind of pleasure, all the riches of the world because he was in Pharaoh's household. But it says here that Moses decided to leave that kind of life because God was calling him to something greater. Actually, if you read in Exodus chapter 2, he saw this, this scene where an Egyptian soldier was beating a Jewish slave. And so he decided to murder this Egyptian soldier and bury him in the sand. And from that moment on, he identified himself as one of the Israelites. And what this text says here is that 
Basically, Moses fled that kind of life, that life of security and comfort, so that he can be used by the Lord. The lesson here is this, that faith recognizes that true fulfillment comes in following Christ over the superficial pleasures of sin. That's what Moses experienced here as he desired to live a life of faith. This phrase, pleasures of sin, is not gross immorality that the writer is talking about here, but is actually a kind of lifestyle. What Moses is fleeing from is a lifestyle of security and comfort, a lifestyle of power and prestige and position so that he can be used by the Lord. I believe that security and comfort, not bad in and of themselves, but they can be pitfalls from living out God's mission in our lives. I believe if we're not careful, security and comfort can prevent us from having a desperate kind of faith. It can actually be an idol in our lives that prevents us from being uh, fully used by the Lord. Jesus reminds us of this. As we looked at the Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus talks about material wealth and possessions in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, he puts it like this. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. What Jesus is saying is if we are devoted to things like money and possessions, we cannot live a life of faith. And that's what the writer is telling us about Moses. Moses is a model for us. Basically, he leaves this old life, a life of prestige, a life of security, because the text says here is that he experienced the joy and the riches of God, which was far greater than the riches of earth. Living by faith means that God will often bring us out out of comfort and security. I am convinced that many people are called to do great things for the Lord, but also many people, it's hard for them to, li- to leave security and comfort, a great career to be used by God in different ways. Maybe on the mission field, maybe it's a calling to go out to a people group and serve them and to spread the gospel. I believe that one of the greatest hindrances of stepping out in faith is security and comfort in our lives. And maybe that's a challenge for all of us. Maybe as we're trying to build our careers, nothing wrong with that. But maybe security and comfort have become too much of an idol where we find it hard to step out in faith in our everyday lives. David Platt puts it like this. He says, we will not wish we had made more money acquired more stuff, lived more comfortably, taken more vacations, watched more television, pursued greater retirements, or been more successful in the eyes of this world. Instead, we will wish we had given more of ourselves to living for the day when every nation, tribe, people, and language will bow around the throne and sing the praises of the Savior who delights in radical obedience and the God who deserves eternal worship. Let's not let riches, comfort, security get in the way of living out in faith and accomplishing God's mission in our lives. Third, doubting God's promises. Verse 29, by faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry ground, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Now, if you kind of are trekking through the story, Moses leads them out of the hands of Pharaoh. The 10 plagues happened. He leads them out and he goes and crosses the Red Sea. And in this moment, what the writer is describing is there when they were right on the edge of the Red Sea. And in Exodus chapter 14, 10, this is how he describes it. When Pharaoh drew near, basically Pharaoh's army was chasing Moses and the Israelites The people of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians were marching after them and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us 
out of Egypt. And so again, as the Israelites were going and about to cross the Red Sea, there was great fear. They were doubting God's uh, promises that God will lead them out. In verse 14, this is how God responds. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I love that because in that moment, what God is promising God's people is that I will fight for you. Remember the promises I gave you that I am going to lead you out of slavery and towards the promised land. Faith is courageously believing in the promises of an unseen God. Again, I believe that one of the greatest barriers to our faith is when we doubt the promises of God in our life. Corey Tamboon puts it like this. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. And so the challenge for us is there, is there any area in our life but we are not trusting in the promises of God. And maybe for us, this, this promise that the Lord will fight for you is something that we need to be reminded of as well. God is for us, not against us. God will go before us in our times of fear. You know, last week during our congregational meeting, I was kind of reflecting back and I was just reminded that I also need to be reminded of God's promises for us as a church, that God is for us, that I believe that God will provide for us, that God will prove himself faithful as we respond to his call and as we desire to follow him. And I believe that should be the same desire for all of us, that we should remind ourselves that God is faithful to the call that he has given you. Fourth, logic, and I put that in quotes, Verse 30, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. And so it kind of fast forward. Uh, now Joshua is the new leader of the Israelites. They haven't reached the land of Canaan yet, the promised land. And what this writer is basically referring to is the time where Joshua is leading God's people and they come to a city called Jericho. Now, back in those days, Jericho was a fortified city where there would be a lot of wars. And so what God tells the Israelites is, I am going to give you the city of Jericho, but you must obey my instructions. And here are the instructions. Every day, you are to circle the city of Jericho. No weapons drawn, but just to circle the city of Jericho. On the last day, which was the seventh day, you are called to walk around Jericho seven times and shout, and the walls will come down. Now, if you think about this command, it seems pretty ludicrous. Here are God's people. They are not called to draw any weapons, not go to war, but God calls them just to walk around the walls of Jericho. And it says that God gave them the city. Why does this writer talk about this incident? Because I believe that sometimes God does not make sense to us, but faith calls us to do what he commands anyway. The Christian life does not mean that we commit intellectual suicide. I, I don't think that's what the writer is getting at here. But I also believe that there will be moments in our life where it doesn't make sense to follow God in a certain area. It may be a radical call in your life. It may be leaving a certain opportunity or a job. I don't know what it is for you, but I believe logically there will be moments where it does not make sense. And I believe that's why he's reminding us of this incident in Jericho. Let's not allow logic and reasoning to dismiss God's great purpose in our life. I believe, again, that there will be moments, these faith moments, where we need to do away with logic and step out in faith. So where does that lead us? Well, how do we overcome these barriers of faith? I just want to draw two lessons here before we close our time. Number one, we live by faith by choosing the better and greater treasure. We live by faith by choosing the better and greater treasure. Again, in verse 26, 
the writer reminds us that Moses, the reason why he was able to live by faith is because he saw Christ as greater than the riches of Egypt. And I believe that's a lesson for us as well. How, do we, how are we called to live out in faith? Basically, we need to really believe that living for Christ is far greater than the treasures of this world. What are the treasures you are seeking? What is most valuable to you? Because that's going to dictate what kind of life of faith we are going to live. A few years ago, I was talking with a missionary uh, who's on the field right now to a Muslim country. And he was sharing a story with me of how God called him to the mission field. And it was a very interesting story because he was basically telling me that um, as he not only became a Christian, but as he was what he believed to be called to the mission field, he said one of the biggest barriers that, God, uh, that he was facing to go to the mission field was actually his parents. And he was sharing with me that his parents had a lucrative um, beauty supply industry, multiple stores. Uh, I believe they were millionaires. And um, he was telling me that he was the next in line to inherit this beauty supply business. And his parents, who were not believers, uh, basically said, uh, why are you wasting this opportunity? Uh, you, you, are, you are set for life if you just come and take over our business. He said it went on as far as to saying that if you leave and go out to the mission field, uh, we will disown you. Uh, we will not give you any of our inheritance. But he felt that God was still calling him out to the mission field. And so he was telling me that just through faith, he left these you know, this opportunity and went out to this Muslim country. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to inherit wealth or to work in your father's business, but I was so encouraged because he followed God's call by faith. And he's still out in this country sharing the gospel to the Muslim people. I think that's what faith ought to be like as we see the treasures of God as we see the kingdom as more valuable than the earthly kingdom, I think that's what will cause us to live by faith. Second, we live by faith by persevering even when God seems invisible. Verse 27 again, by faith he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. Again, just a reminder of why the writer is writing this letter to the people in the book of Hebrews. He's encouraging people to persevere in their faith. And one of the reasons why is many of these people wanted to give up. They were questioning why live by faith when it doesn't seem like it's worth it. We live by faith and we even pers persevere trusting that God is still at work. I love what Pastor John Piper says about this one particular passage. I just want to actually read it for us because I, I believe that he puts it well. He says this, Now the question is, would Moses endure in this chosen path of suffering for the people of God and the glory of the Messiah? Or would he cave in like so many cave in today to Egypt, the passing pleasures of this world? For he endured in what? In the same deep motive that caused them to choose ill treatment with the people of God and reproach for the sake of the Messiah. Namely, he endured as seeing him who was unseen. In other words, by faith, by looking to God's promise, not Pharaoh's threat. That's what faith does all through this chapter. Faith is a hunger for God that triumphs over the hunger for the pleasures of this world. And so faith unleashes radically God-centered, risk-taking, people-loving behavior. I love the way Pastor John puts that. And that's the way that we endure and overcome barriers to our faith. It's when we believe that God is still at work. It's when we believe that God still can part the Red Sea and we can trust in his promises. And so again, the question I just want to close us with, where in your life is God calling you to live by faith? 
And maybe if we're very honest, maybe some of these barriers are preventing us to live by faith. My encouragement to all of us is to ask the Lord that he would help us to overcome. Is it fear? Is it doubting in God's promises? Is it security and comfort? Is it even things like logic? We want to think so logically and plan out our lives that there is no room for faith. And so my hope is as a church community, let's continue to ask God that we would live out these faith moments and we would see the faithfulness of God in our lives. Let's bow our heads and pray as we close our time together.